scandals, Bush. Number three, rigging the election gate. Lost in the Supreme Court's misunderstanding of the Second Amendment today. Another whopper from Justice Alito. The Millionaire's Amendment has been ruled unconstitutional. It was the act that balanced funding in this House, uh, House and Senate races when a rich guy was using his own money to run against a not-so-rich guy. If a candidate funded his own campaign, he or she had to submit extra disclosure forms about it, and the opponent could start raising funds at twice or even three times the usual legal limits. Justice Alito and the four other chowder heads threw that out today because it discriminates against the rich guy. Number two, more oil drilling gate. Senator McCain favors it, who voted him in as a congressman. ISA profaned Tim Russert's name while he argued for it in the House. Now a criticism saying drilling in U.S. waters offshore would produce nothing for five or ten years, and even then only add a minimal amount to oil, of oil to the supplies. And so in the year 2018, it would not knock more than a nickel off your gallon of gas. Which Democrat said that? Well, not a Democrat, rather Guy Caruso, the head of Mr. Bush's Energy Information Administration. He is the administration's top forecaster on energy. You figured it out, haven't you? Who the only people are who could possibly benefit from more drilling, right? The people who make money when you fuel your home with oil products and not, say, wind. But our winners support the troops gate. This is about Private First Class Isaac Stevens, 3rd Infantry Division, 11 Bravo Company. Well, that's where he started. Then he suffered a head injury and spinal damage during training. Last November, PFC Stevens was discharged with his claim for medical benefits not yet processed. You heard me. He was removed from the Army, no longer received his Army pay, and had not yet been granted any Army benefit money. Did I mention the injury had left him in that wheelchair? That was last November. By February, he was broke. By March, he was in a homeless shelter. By April, from his wheelchair, he had had to fight off the sexual advances of another man in the homeless shelter. Fortunately for Private Stevens, a social worker at an army base working in her spare time got him into an apartment with help from a nonprofit, non-governmental organization. But nearly 20,000 disabled soldiers like Isaac Stevens were discharged in the last two years, and most of them have had to navigate or fall through cracks between the last day of pay and the first day of benefits, a gap of up to a year. You let this happen, Mr. Bush, and it's your critics who are not doing enough to support the troops?